Can you see and do everything at the Universal Orlando Resort in one day? No, but that doesn't mean that it's not worth going. Some big brain smart guy over at MIT decided a little while back that one is in fact greater than zero. So what we're gonna do in today's video is we're gonna talk about what we would personally do if we only had one day at the parks, as well as give you some tips and tricks to help you make the most out of your time at Universal. We're gonna do something fun with this video today where we're going to give you guys our theoretical framework of how we think we would attack a single day at Universal. And then in a later video, we're actually gonna put this to the test and yeah. see if it's feasible in the parks. And also so you guys can see how our plan has to adapt and change on the fly. Also, at the end of this video, we're gonna talk about how you could modify this itinerary to meet your specific needs. We're gonna start off our day with early park admission, which gets you access to the parks for an extra hour. This is going to be crucial if you're trying to get as much done as possible. Universal actually just brought Hagrid's back to EPA, and that's going to be our first stop. We recommend getting to the gate at least 30 minutes before EPA is scheduled to start for two separate reasons. The first one is that you wanna be as close to the front of the line as possible, and the second one is that they sometimes open up the gates a few minutes early and you wanna be there if that's the case because it is going to be a mad dash to Hagrid's. So there is a small caveat here. Like we said, Hagrid's is extremely popular. If we get up there and we are somewhere by that fountain in the Lost Continent, we're cool. Like we're gonna go ahead and get in line. But sometimes that line can get way longer than that. Like if it's back there by Fire Eaters or even into Seuss Landing like we've seen it a few times, oh. we do not <laughs> have time for that. Like we're, we're just gonna go ahead and move on to our next attraction and that's kind of what we think you should do. If you only have one day in the parks, you definitely are gonna want to ride Hagrid's. Like it's a must ride, but spending the first two and a half to three hours waiting for it, mm, probably not optimal. Yeah, and if you don't get on Hagrid's first thing in the morning, you'll wanna make sure to keep an eye out on your app to see what that wait time is throughout the day. Our threshold is usually about 90 minutes. Yeah. So if you see it around there, it's probably worth it to go ahead and get in line. And one thing about Hagrid's is that as long as the ride doesn't go down, the line moves pretty quickly yeah. and they tend to overestimate the posted wait time. So don't let that scare you too much. After Hagrid's, we're gonna make our way to the next attraction in Hogsmeade, which is Forbidden Journey. The great thing about early park admission is that there aren't any express lines at all. So anyone that tries to get in line for this attraction before the parks officially open is gonna be in that same standard line. And what's really nice about this is that the line moves substantially quicker because they're not having to constantly stop it to let the express people go by. And here is a little pro tip. <laughs> Um, if you're in one of these long lines, Forbidden Journey is a little bit harder, but especially Hagrid's, you can send somebody else from your party out to Hogsmeade to get you some butter beers so you can enjoy those while you wait in line. However, I will advise that when they get back, you smell their breath to make sure they're not skimming off the top. After we catch up with Harry and the gang, we're gonna continue making our way around the loop in Islands of Adventure until we get to the Velocicoaster. This is another one of those attractions where you're rarely gonna wait as long as the posted time because the line does move so quickly. You'll be on and off this attraction before you even know it and have three of the most popular rides in Islands of Adventure done in a few hours at the most. This is also the perfect opportunity to stop at the watering hole to activate your freestyle cup before you get in line. And the great thing about Velocicoaster is that those lockers are embedded in the queue, so you actually have time to enjoy your drink before you get on it. PSA, do not put a cup that is full of liquid or ice in any of the lockers. Don't do it. And of course, you can't visit Islands of Adventure without getting on some type of water ride. So the next thing we're gonna do is make our way over to the Jurassic Park River Adventure. Now, all of the water attractions in Islands are fantastic, yeah. but the reason we picked River Adventure is because you get the least wet on this attraction. Yeah, your top half is probably gonna get soaked, but they do have a nice little cubby in the ride vehicle where you can stick your feet up under there so that your shoes don't get soaking wet. That way, you're not miserable and don't get blisters on your feet where it ruins the rest of your day. 
Once we get off of River Adventure, this is where we're probably gonna have our first kind of big decision. And it's gonna be based on a few factors. So as you continue around the loop, the next ride is Kong. We love Kong, but the problem is Kong sometimes has an absurdly high wait time. So like if it's already 12 o'clock, you really don't have an hour to be waiting in line for Kong. You've still got all of studios left. Uh, but if you get done with all this stuff, like say we were done with it at 1030, yeah, you can get on Kong if you want to. At this point, whether we ride Kong or not, we're gonna continue into Marvel Island where there are two attractions that we have to ride here. Yeah. The first one is the Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man and the second one is Storm Force Accelotron. Mm, no. <laughs> I'm kidding. Of course, you have to ride okay. the Hulk coaster, but we wanna make sure that we ride Hulk before we get lunch because you do not wanna have food on your stomach when you jump on that roller coaster. Another thing we try to do is eat at off hours in the parks. And the reason that we do this is that the food lines can get really crazy. So if you eat at weird times, you typically don't have to wait as long yeah. for your food. By this point, it's probably one or two in the afternoon mm -hmm. and we are going to be absolutely starving. Ravenous. But thankfully, just on the other side of the water is our favorite quick service restaurant in Islands of Adventure and that's Green Eggs and Ham. So we're gonna head over there and get some pizza tots. You can get whatever kind of tots float your Buffalo boat. chicken for me. After we eat, we're gonna make our way over to Universal Studios and we're gonna choose to walk uh. because it's probably the quickest way. Of course, you may be thinking, well, why don't you take the Hogwarts Express? And the reason we're going to avoid that is because that line can get so, so long. It takes a certain amount of time for the train to pick people up, head to the other park, pick up another group of people, and then make its way back. So unfortunately, walking is gonna be our best bet here. Once we get to studios, the first attraction that we would typically make our way to is Revenge of the Mummy, yeah. which is currently shut down for renovations. Mm. If when you visit on your trip, it's back open, make your way straight to the mummy and see if Brendan Fraser is still able to get his cup of coffee or not. But we are going to make a beeline to Diagon Alley so that we can get on the escape from Gringotts. Gringotts is probably the ride we're gonna have to wait for the longest yeah. in studios. It may contains an extremely high wait time. So this is also the perfect opportunity to head over either to the Fountain yes. of Fair Fortune or yes. the Hopping Pot to get some butter beer while you wait. After we narrowly escape our face-to-face -face encounter with Voldemort and Nagini, we're gonna make our way to the very back of Universal Studios so that we can zap some aliens at Men in Black. Yeah, our day is not complete at Universal without having a little competition at <laughs> Men in Black and for some reason, Anna, has to take an L every time that we're there. <laughs> After we ride Men in Black, we're gonna make our way right past The Simpsons, enjoying all the scenery and all the wonderful theming in Springfield as we make our way to the one true classic that is E.T. Adventure. After we finish crying happy tears from all the nostalgic memories that E.T. brings up, we're probably gonna be getting hungry again. Always. So at this point, we're gonna make our way over to Central Park Crepes for second lunch. And we like to call this slunch. <laughs> I'll use it in a sentence for you. Hey Tyler, would you like to go to lunch today? I'm sorry, I've already been to lunch, but I'm always up for slunch. It's just second lunch. So a lot of people talk about house like food in theme parks is good. And what they're saying is like, yeah, it's good for theme park food, but the crepes over at Central Park crepes are like good anywhere. We absolutely love them. And the one that we always get is that brisket crepe. At this point, there are only two major attractions left in Universal Studios, and that's Transformers The Ride 3D and the Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket. Since we're leaving from the Central Park Crakes, the closest of those two attractions is Transformers, so we'll start with that one, and then we can finish off our night with the Rip Ride Rocket. If you're lucky, you might even get to ride this attraction at night, which is one of our favorite things to do. After you ride this, it's probably gonna be time to make your way into City Walk and call it a night, but if you you do still have an hour or so before closing, you can wander around and enjoy everything else that the parks have to offer. 
You may have watched this video and thought, oh, this is a great plan, but I don't like roller coasters or I don't really wanna ride any water attractions. And that's the great thing is that you can customize this. Sit down with your friends, your family, whoever you're visiting the parks with and come up with a list of your priorities and then edit this itinerary to work for you. The biggest piece of advice that we can give you is just to have fun and be yeah. flexible. Don't get so caught up on the plan that you don't enjoy your time at the parks because worst case scenario, if there's something that you don't get to, it just gives you an excuse to come back. All right, guys, that wraps up today's video. Leave us a comment in the comments section and let us know how many trips to the Hoppin' Pot did we leave out? <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. You can hit that subscribe button and turn on that bell notification so you get an alert every time we post a new video. Thanks for watching, at least four. <laughs>